Hey guys, it's Aaron with DIY Home Repair. And today I'm gonna to be going over how to install a GFCI outlet as well as when and where they should be installed. All right, so GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. Now what that means essentially is that if there's any imbalance in the current, um, the current is immediately shut off. So in the instance of a GFCI outlet, um, if any uh, imbalance is detected, the power is immediately shut off at the outlet and then you'll, you'll see the outlet trip. Um, an example of that might be um, you've got a curling iron or hair straightener or something like that and it gets wet, water splashed up on it. Um, the outlet might detect that and immediately shut off the power. <clears throat> Alright, so according to the NEC, GFCI protection is required in bathrooms, garages, outdoor locations, unfinished basements, crawl spaces, kitchens, laundry utility rooms, and pool spa areas. Now that of course doesn't necessarily mean that a GFC outlet, GFCI outlet is required in all those locations. It just means that they just need to be GFCI protected. That being said, don't go running around your house thinking, oh my gosh, I need to replace all these outlets because they're not GFCI protected. In a lot of those locations, the only thing that's required is GFCI protection, which can be accomplished through a standard outlet that is downstream of, G, of a GSI, GFCI receptacle. Now an example of this might be a kitchen. Um, so for example, if we look at my kitchen, I have a GFCI outlet and then I have three standard outlets downstream. Now those are all protected assuming that they are connected properly to the GFCI and that the GFCI is so good. Now a way to test that would be to go to your GFCI outlet, hit the test button, which should shut off the power, and then go down to your downstream outlets and put your tester in there and make sure that the power has been shut down, shut off. As long as it has been shut off, you know your GFCI protected. If it hasn't been shut off, um, you're probably gonna wanna look at either replacing the outlets, um, checking your GFCI and making sure it's wired correctly, or just making sure your GFCI is still good as they do go bad. Now in most cases that should still be good as they're all GFCI protected and it should meet code. Now the other thing that's important to note is that a lot of areas actually have their own local code. They don't just follow NEC code. Um, so you do need to check on that before you um, identify where exactly you need to put your uh, GFCI outlets at. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our old receptacle. Now, before we can do that, we need to actually shut off our circuit. Um, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to be using the Klein Tools uh, Circuit Breaker Finder. Now, if you don't know how to use this, I will link to it and, up in the, and there'll be a link up in the corner or there'll be a link in the description. But we're just going to plug this in and then we'll go shut our circuit off. All right, so now that our circuit's off, we'll go ahead and pull out our old outlet. All right, so now that we have our outlet off, um, we need to identify um, where, which, which lines are the line and which is the load. Now, the line is going to be the one that actually delivers the power um, and the load is going to be connected to the downstream outlets. All right, so let's go ahead and get this turned back on so we can see what size the line and what's the load. With the power back on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my voltage detector here and I'm just going to, I don't have to touch them, just get close. And you can see this is where my power is coming from. So this is going to be my line. So, but now that we've identified, what we're going to do is just go ahead and shut it, shut our circuit back off. Now, all right. So now I've got it off. So what I'll do is I'll just test, and you can see it's not no longer hot. Now, in this instance, our main power is just one line coming in, and doesn't actually have any pigtails. So the pigtails is actually to all the downstream outlets of this. So I have a couple other bathrooms that are hooked up to this as well. Now, if, for example, you ran into a situation where the main power was actually a pigtail, 
it would work and you could actually do this and use that off a of pigtail, but nothing else on that pigtail would actually be affected um, by the GFCI outlet, only things downstream. So for example, if you had this pigtail here was connected to the GFCI, whatever else is on that pigtail will not be GFCI protected, only everything downstream of that outlet. All right, so now that I got my um, hot wires actually identified here, I can go ahead and install um, the receptacle properly. Um, now, this is an Eaton unit, and I'm actually gonna use these in the back here, these, um, these holes back here, um, and mainly because these do fail every once in a while, um, and it's just easier, and they actually connect right up here, so. All right, so with these, there's actually a couple things that a lot of people don't know about these. Um, there's a strip gauge on the back here, so um, this will tell you how, how deep to actually strip the wire, how, how, how far back you want to strip it. So that's one tool that's on there. But there's another one um, that, like I said, a lot of people don't know about. There's actually a set of wire strippers here. Um, so there's two different gauges here. There's a 14 and a 12 gauge here, and you can see... If you take your wire like this, like this. Now these aren't the most convenient things, but it does work. It's gonna go in there, and then you spin that around a couple times on the wire like that. And you can actually just pop that right off. And there you go, and then you have it cut. You know, strip back where you want. Now, like I said, it's not the most convenient thing. Um, I'm probably not going to use it again, but it is there. It's kind of a neat little tool. So again, all right, so now that I got that stripped back, what we're just going to go ahead and put that in there. And like I said, it's fine to use these on GFCI units here. So we'll just tighten this down. Okay, so now I've got my neutral that's also coming in on the same uh, connection as the direct power here. So this is the direct power neutral. I'm going to strip that back, and I'm going to go with some wire strippers here. I got our on the opposite side. I'm going to put in the neutral here, and this is going to be the silver one, silver screw. It's going to line up with our neutral. I'll just screw that down. Now we can go ahead and connect up our load side. Now we'll just push it back into the box here. Now some people prefer to put it in a certain way um, with this up or this down. I don't think it really matters either way. Um, so we're just gonna get it back in our box here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you click that link below and become one. We'll catch you on the next one.